Nali, thank you for coming to Pedal Smash. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, and where you're originally from? Well, thank you first for having me, uh, Pedal Smash Academy. And uh, uh, as you can hear a little bit, I'm from France originally, uh, half Swedish, but from France, you know, I grew up over there. I, I played uh, tennis at UCLA. Uh, for five years, four years of playing and five years in school. And uh, all my life, I've been between France and the US. Now I've been living in Miami for 14 years. So is uh, tennis your first racket sport? Actually, believe it or not, uh, my first racket ever was was probably paddle. paddle because wow. I started playing tennis. I mean, I'm exaggerating. I, as a kid, my dad, who was a Davis Cup player for France, he um, he probably gave me a racket, but I can't remember. I didn't like tennis at first, and uh, I just discovered racket sports when I was going uh, in Acapulco. I was lucky by chance. My, my my parents were going there for the holidays for Christmas, and uh, one of the few rackets, uh, the first rackets I was holding was was a paddle racket at the time. Wow, that's beautiful. That's let me let me ask one thing. I've seen on the internet, and I think you post them, uh, a photo of you when you were a kid on the Corquera uh, court. Yeah, is that, is that possible? Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, tell us about that. So, uh, like I said, it, I, if you know a little bit about the origin of the game, basically, um, these, this group of, uh, they call it, you know, jet setters in Acapulco uh, started creating this game called paddle tennis at the time, <laughs> and uh, that became padel. Um, and, uh, and it happens to be that my parents knew those people from traveling from the jet set when these guys were coming in the winter or in the summer to south of france they met my parents hey why don't you come over for christmas to acapulco and that's that's how they got there and i was a kid i was first time i think i was four four or five years old and uh for a few years we did that that was kind of our tradition for a few years and that photo you're talking about was viviana corcuera yes the, the wife of uh, enrique corcuera who actually be, because we all credit uh, him, Enrique, for inventing the game, but the person who actually wrote the game, wrote the rules of the game, is Viviana. She was a, oh. she was actually the, the 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 steady, serious one, and he was the artist creator who say, "Oh no, let's cut down the, the trees and let's put a wall there and let's lower the net and come up with something with his friends." And uh, you know, uh, one of them was. Uh, um, uh, the Prince of uh, Owenlo and Alfonso de Owenlo. And uh, that was kind of how the, the game gelled. And I mean, if you're interested, I, I think I told you a little bit before, but basically um, everybody had their say and every single house <laughs> was inventing their own tea, their own rules. And uh, some had no certain volley, some had no hitting the ball out because it's bothering the neighbors and some playing with ping pong. Uh, uh, <laughs> Different balls, right? Yeah. No the same ball but uh 21 points instead of playing sets oh yeah, okay yeah. and a bunch of things like that and and but initially they were the the platform tennis racket correct i i i mean i don't think that platform even existed at that time okay so they were uh paddle rackets when i say paddle it said paddle p-a-d-d-l-e <laughs> maybe it referred to platform i'm not mm. sure about that okay but there were these marcraft rackets and uh, and uh, and actually, if anyone has any of those rackets, I'm looking for them because I would love to have a, a memory from that. And did you actually play in that court? On the, on yes. The first, oh, you know, uh, that's the, the, that. That was the first place I, mm -hmm. I played on uh, was that court uh, because he was one. So basically, the way the tournament was going at the time for the adults, I was I, for us for the kids, it was just a one day thing. But for them, it was like a whole week thing, and they were pompously calling it the World Championships of Paddle. <laughs> <laughs> and they were playing matches. There was a draw. I remember as a kid watching it and you would play one day at one house and then the next day at another house and they would regroup kind of the organization at the main house, which is the Portanova house, where they had the final. They actually built the stadium. I mean, the stadium like like uh, some bleachers built into the beautiful. They even had fans <laughs> on the court. Wow. You know, at the time, yeah, and yeah, we're talking yeah. in the 70s and yeah, 80s, yeah, yeah. so it's it's quite a feat at the time. And um, and and yeah, that's that's how they were playing it. But basically you would play and there's not one court that was the same. 
there was one court that was 18 meters. <laughs> the other one was 12 meters wide. Sounds like so, right here in Miami. Yes. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> well, at least they have the same dimensions yeah, here. Yeah, but yeah. there, they had some. Some had a much bigger uh, service box. The other one had a net of a tennis court, <laughs> and and so on. So it was very particular. And uh, so, so and Viviana was the one who wrote up the rules. She said, "Listen, guys, you guys are bothering me, screaming yeah. every night yeah. at who should do what and what." And so I'm just going to take charge. And she wrote the book. She wrote the first original rule book for Padel. If I remember well, I remember that the Argentinian rules were when you serve, you have to stay back. Yeah. And the Spanish rules, you can serve and come up to the net. Yeah. Well, it was, it again, this whole thing originated from that city, from Acapulco, because there was, I cannot tell you what, but probably an Argentinian uh, court owner in Acapulco said, no, in my house, <laughs> there's no serve and volley. You got to serve and stay back. Because it's too much of an advantage for okay. tennis players to serve and come in. So because he was not a tennis player, I guess. And so that was his rule. And uh that stick to that when they was brought into Argentina. I don't know if it's for that, but yes, in Argentina in the 90s, I guess, yeah, the 80s, yeah. That's how it was played. That's where I grew up playing, and like you have to stay back, yeah. and then they got together. So so you've been involved in paddle for pretty much your, your entire life. So what happened after that? I mean, you know, you were playing in Corcuera's house and what happened then? That was really kind of a holiday thing, like a week a year. It was then like really playing seriously. And then for 51 weeks, the game disappeared. But this one guy. That, why, why do you think that 51 weeks? That, because I was just oh, not living in Acapulco. Right, right. I was gotcha, not in gotcha, Acapulco. Gotcha. But what I meant is there was this one guy that was in that group. That was a, a very uh, uh, famous and um, uh, rich French person called Tony Murray, and he said, I'm just going to do this in every single one of my houses. And the guy had 30 houses. So he had one in LA, he had one, and the main one where I was playing was in Saint Tropez in south of France. And I would spend my summers there when I got older as a teenager to play. I was now I was starting to train tennis. So I would train tennis in the morning, like training really and then i would go and hang out on the paddle court and <laughs> always be you know that fourth you're missing a player or you need to equalize or yeah, yeah, yeah. give a lesson or something i would spend like five six hours a day on the paddle court wow yeah and when, when they became competitive no that's much later so i really never take it took it seriously and it totally disappeared i'd say from when i turned 15 16 i stopped going on holidays, I would really spend my whole time and play as a professional tennis player, um, you know, played the junior tour and then uh, then started playing some ATPs and so on. So it totally disappeared for like 10 years. Uh, then I went back to college uh, to UCLA when I was 21. So till, and I, I really re rediscovered paddle when I was 25. I graduated from UCLA, stopped playing tennis, had shoulder injuries, one after another, two surgeries and so on. And um, and I and I went back home literally after college, you know, not really knowing what to do uh, with my life. I actually went to work one year in New York, but I was 25, 26. And believe it or not, I read the, the local papers and there's a quarter of a page that announces big paddle exhibition in wow. Nice with Juan Martin Diaz, Seba Nerone, <laughs> Hernando Guste and uh, Gabi Reca. What, what were you thinking at that time? We saw no, they were like, there is not one. You know? No, not even. No, I was. What were you thinking like? Because it was like, huh, that's funny. It's the game I played, and so mm -hmm. on. Let's go check it out. You know, and I didn't know who those guys were yeah. at all. But I go, and now I see for the first time. I see a glass court. It was still hard court on. Uh, oh, oh, really? On the ground. Yeah. Wow. But it was glass around, and I see these beasts. <laughs> Because again, those were the top four players at yeah, the time yeah. in the world. Yeah, they were number one and two. Yeah, yeah. No, one and two or three and four. Yeah. And so they were playing like very similar to what they're doing today still already. And I'm like, I got to get on the court. And I get on the court. I say, hello, my name is Nale. Who, who, who the fuck are you? Uh, uh, well, I just think what you're doing is amazing. Can you show me something? And 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 that just from that day, I'm like, huh, this is so cool because it's not so bad on my shoulder. Right. And I started playing in France, which was, I, I want to say, s similar to what's going on here today. Basically, 
if you're a decent tennis player and you really focus on it, in a year I was in the top 10 in France. And the president of the federation in France told me, listen, you, you know, the guys that are in, in the national team, they're all like, they, they want to go just to party. They don't care about the game. And they're all like 40 years old and so on. Why don't you come with us? And you and your partner, we were two tennis players. You're a bit green, but it, at least you'll get some experience. So I went 2002. I was in Mexico for the World Championships for uh -huh. play, representing France. So was was Paddle really big in 2002 in France, or which is it was? I I want to compare to what it is today here. Really? Yes. So, so it, oh. it existed. It was the start. Believe it or not, you may not know, but in 2000, the World Championship of the FIP were in Toulouse, France. Wow. Yeah. So that was the spark. There was a promoter that believed in it. He was actually the, the president of the French Federation, Claude Batch. And he really got the first spark for paddle into France in 2000, in nine, starting in 98, but culmination in 2000. And then, of course, there was some kind of, there was like, yeah, 100, 150 courts, just like here now. And unfortunately, uh, it kind of died down because he didn't, he didn't convert enough people and he he actually had to retire from the federation because he was doing a bit of everything at the same time so yeah. uh, people started asking questions of how you can sell courts at the same time as being the president of the federation right, doesn't right, kind right. of go together but so but he did after him unfortunately uh, my father ended up becoming the president because somebody had to had to nobody wanted to do it right. and he is what he did was to bring it to the Tennis Federation, the French, who's a very strong federation because of the Roland Garros of the French Open. So they had a lot of um, um, uh, money to pour in and that's how it started in France. So now it, it, the paddle belongs to the uh, yes. French Tennis Federation. Yes. So similar to what it's in England. England, I guess. LPA, I yes. think it's the same thing. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. So now, yeah. so now you're saying that you're seeing the same thing here, right, in Miami. Is that what motivated you now to, you know, open up a club or clubs? So, yeah, I mean, uh, I opened my first club in 2004 uh, in Nice, France, uh, following that. And uh, it was always been a passion project, never been uh, uh, about the money. About the money. I've lost a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> over 20 years in battle you're but not, you're not the only one exactly sure. <laughs> but but we, always with great i with all the tournaments i've organized all the clubs i've opened or helped it to open and so on it's never been uh because i've never seen the business uh, aspect of things uh, so far uh that all changed uh, in the recent years here in the U.S. because... What, what changed? What can you... Well, what what changed, other verticals can you have? What, how can you monetize? My, how, yeah, how? what changed? What changes uh, my... Uh, well, the ecosystem exists now in the world. Okay. In the U.S., no, not yet. And uh, and that's what that's what made me decide to really give it a, a shot in a, on, on the business side of things. Uh, and the real change was at the Miami Palo Open in 2022, uh, when I saw really the attraction and the interest of the public, because it's the first time that really we exposed the game and, and exposed kind of to, to a larger crowd. To that level too. Yeah, to that level and to that crowd. There was there was the event in 2017, you know, there was a World Palo yeah. Tour on the beach, but it was not organized by us. It was uh, we we participated. We helped a bit, but um, it was not um, it was not the same level of uh, of, of organization, and uh, and and it it was not ready either. Mm -hmm. You know, five years later, twenty two, uh, we all know about that spark that was created by also the the COVID. You know, uh, a lot of people started going to clubs, uh, and 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 I I felt a change, and also. The difference is, even though in the U.S. you think it's it's a new sport, it's very mature now in a lot of countries. Yeah, we have yeah. 70, over 75 federations that are reported. It's going to become an Olympic sport yeah. soon. It's growing. So uh, in the eyes of the U.S. Uh, public, it may be surprising, I would say, Or, uh, but in, in the rest of the world, you can go to... 
uh, South uh, South America, of course, but you go to Europe, you go to the Middle uh, East, you know? Middle East, yeah. and even Asia. You know, I just had my my buddies came back from. Uh, uh, they went to play Thailand, to play Japan, and uh, and 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 look at Pat Rafter playing the Australian Open, and it's over. It's all over. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's and it's, you know, the U.S. being the number one economy in the world, and starting to get interested in it, I see an opportunity. I see a business opportunity. I I decided to uh, build a, a company. I, I partner up with a, a group, an amazing group from. A, uh, originating from uh, Chile called uh, Utopia. Uh, there are prof biggest professionals in uh, in uh, the wellness uh, wellness centers and uh, real estate and, and hospitality. And uh, it just clicked, you know, and today uh, they bring uh, all their business knowledge and so on. I bring my side with the paddle experience and uh, here's Paddle X. And where do you see Paddle grow, going from here? I mean, first of all, you know, Paddle X, but mainly in the United States. Where, wh how far do you see the growth? Listen, I, I, it's, I honestly, I honestly it's, think it's going to be a hit. I think it's going to go. Who knows where it's going to go? I think it's going to be really big. Um, it's too much of an entertainment. Uh, it's too much of a. Uh, of, of a fun and, game to play. And that's a good point, entertainment. And yeah. that's, that's what's missing for the other racket sports. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking on the U.S. market. Yeah. You see, uh, I mean, the U.S. market, the U.S. has, oh, the Americans have always been the best and always been very keen on being entertained and, and, and having fun. And that's what you see. And that's what, I mean, I don't want to compare every sport uh, with other racket sports, but a lot of sports... Uh, have uh, some great assets or some great advantages and 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 some less and the good side the hard side for paddle is a, it's hard to set up you know you need a lot of permits there's a glass factor in the US for now I think uh, it's still a bit of a challenge to get get your feet on the ground but uh, once you're there um, there's no looking back because that's what, always what I say. Um, Ninety-one percent. This is a true fact. Uh, we did a study uh, when I was in back in twenty years, but it doesn't matter. We had two thousand people uh, come by uh, a court we put in center of the town in France at the time where again the sport was even less famous than here at this time. And we asked those. They had, they stepped on the court for twenty minutes hit the ball and so on. And then yeah. they had in exchange of that, we were asking that they give us five minutes of their time to fill up a questionnaire. And and uh, and they would say the question, well, first question was, have you ever seen this or ever heard of paddle? 98 or 99% said no. Wow. 99%. So that tells you, would you be willing to try this again? 91%. Wow. You see? Yeah. And that's <laughs> that says it all. To yeah. me, that says it all. Yeah, people Be become addictive to it. So it's just a matter of exposing and inoculating the virus to more yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I love that bitch. And so let's talk about Paddle X. Let's talk about the process. Yes. Because I've seen that. I drive by there all the time. And it's been like, what, a year, year and a half. I see them like, when is this thing going to open? I'm dying because I'm like four blocks away. Of course. And now it's opening up. So let's talk to you know to some of the people who may be interested in doing what you're doing and in that process and you know how long that process is and the changes and pivots that you have to make to make this thing happen. Listen, um, I hope we're trailblazing for 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 kind of you guys are people. you are. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a hassle, you know, in the U.S. especially. There's a lot, and I understand it also because there's so much liability. There's a lot of things to do. And the cities necessarily they're not familiar with it. They see the, uh, the 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 aspect of having humans being with glass, and oh my god, you know what? Scares them. I'm just gonna uh, say no this way. So you gotta really, really, really work a lot with the cities. You gotta get your permits approved, uh, make changes. Uh, some places have to build these crazy reinforced courts and yeah. so on, and and. And so it's a it's a pro it's a it's a it's a real process it's a real process and um, and that's what took time that's what takes time so yes we've been uh, on this project for a little bit over twelve months today but we're seeing the end of the tunnel yes. uh, and uh, we see the lights 
we're a couple of weeks out from uh, from opening um 10 courts in downtown miami so you know i i think we cannot beat the location oh no it's a great location yeah, yeah. 10 absolutely courts. incredible so, location. so what turf are you guys using so we're using uh so we built courts with mejor sets okay and we're using the the latest Apparently, the latest generation of, uh, of Mondo uh, Mondo cores, the Mondo Shot. Yeah, it's uh, if you want to get into the details, I I I love it. It's not because it's texturized or monofilament. It's, yeah, it's texturized okay. and it's 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 between the so the mini monofilament that we have known for so many years with a, a lot of sand. Um, yep. uh, it's not like that, but it's not like the the first generation of texturized uh, cores which have very little or almost no sand that are a bit sticky sometimes for mm -hmm. the knees. It's right in between. It's this texturized uh, with a little bit more sand than than the the, the, the texturized they used to do. Now, have you played on it? Yeah, yeah, we've played. <laughs> I think I've seen that. <laughs> we've played on it. And honestly, I mean, again, uh, uh, I'm maybe a bit biased because it's it's it, it's our courts, it's but your uh, baby. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think they're the best courts I've ever played on. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I you, really think. Are so. you doing panoramics? Yes, they're f no, they're panoramic courts on the back uh, with uh, no with the silicone, so no uh, no screws anywhere. Okay. Oh, nice. So and since we have the um, camera technology, we have three cameras on each of the, the premium courts. It will allow our customers to, without even registering, just the fact that they're playing on those courts, uh, they will allow them to tap on the side of the court uh, if they want to mark a trim inside the game when they're filming. And let's say at the end of the game, if they have um, marked four, five, seven trims because there was that many great shots, they just need to use their phone and uh, uh, scan the QR code on the on the screen, and poof, you get access to all of that right away. Genius! And with you, a, f you know, you, you, you know what? I thought of that two years ago. <laughs> okay. And I presented it to a club, and and mm, that is that is what people want. It, yes. Yeah, it's genius. But it's got to be. Listen, we technology is great, but it has to be user friendly. Yeah. You know? yeah and and, and we selected this, uh, and we worked actually on it ourselves with a French company. Uh, called Spash, uh, and we really, really, and I hope, I hope it's going to come out the way that we mm -hmm. we we intended to. But uh, uh, the goal is to really make it user friendly, that you don't need to have more than three clicks or four clicks mm -hmm. to go from having the court. So you don't need to enter a username and a password okay. and say who is who. So yeah. There's no AI. You know, okay. the the latest trend is to try to make some AI. Uh, to calculate the speed of the ball, how many bounces, how many points, and so on. So th that's not the key on this. The key is really to make it f fun and easy and shareable, obviously, on the social media. That's great. So they will get the format uh, on a video format or a, uh, on on the, to be able to just uh, upload it onto a social so media. So is that a cost to them, or do you transfer it through, let's say, the cost per hour uh, on that core? Yes. That's what we do. Okay. It's not a cost to them. That's also another thing that we wanted to to do. There's a there's a small premium to play on those courts compared okay. to the other ones, but uh, <clears throat> there is. Um, but it, then that's it. Okay. So if you play or if you're a member, then it's free. Okay, so let's talk mm -hmm. about that yes. cost. Uh, what everybody wants. Cost. Yeah, cost. How much? In case <laughs> you guys, uh, you talk about membership. So there's a membership and yes. there's a, a non-membership, right? Yes. And then there's uh, the benefits of that, right? The costs of memberships or non-memberships and the amenities. So let, let's start with the cost first. <laughs> so the cost, I mean, listen, we're, I think, right there in the market uh, are... So let's talk about members. So what are the costs Mem for members? So what members, is the cost if you members? get the membership, it's twelve hundred dollars okay. membership a year, hundred bucks a year, hundred uh, uh, bucks a month. month. Yeah, but it's a one-time fee. Okay, so you pay. You're a member for one year, and you have an anniversary date. Doesn't you don't have to start a specific date, and um, then um, it gives you. And then if you're not a member, or regardless if you're a member or not, it's a. Uh, the prices are uh, on the main course is one hundred thirty-five dollars okay. an hour. Yeah. An hour and a half. An hour and a half. Okay. And and one hundred fifty five dollars on the premium courts. If you if you're a member, then you pay one hundred thirty five dollars on every court. 
Okay. 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 So you get so the you premium get 15, ones. Yes, you get a fifteen percent discount. And okay. and what what are the premium courts? What do you define a premium court or regular court? So there's four premium courts that have more amenities or more comfort. When I, what I what do I mean? There is six courts that have a about two meters, so you know six feet between the courts, okay. which is not enough to allow exits, you know, when you play at a high level and there's exits. And the four premium courts do have each one the uh, um, <clears throat> the correct size for the ears, for the exits, oh. all four of them. So basically between between um, uh, two premium courts, you get four meters because you got to multiply by two. All right, both sides, yeah. Both sides. And um, that's number one. Then we're going to have... Uh, they're also next to the clubhouse. They're more exposed. And then we're going to have the video technology. Mm -hmm. And the video technology is not only what I just described. It's also for the, uh, we have a special lesson that uh, will start with me first, because uh, I'm going to give a few lessons there Great. for uh, for the people who want to get a full scope of their game. Basically, uh, we we will analyze with the video their game from A to Z, and then we'll spend 15, 20 minutes in front of a screen, describing with drawings and everything, uh, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. And then they can leave with that recording That's home beautiful. and work great. with it. That's great. Come back, maybe take some lessons to work on the, those, yeah. those details they want to improve. Um, and come back a month later, redo the video to see how they improved. Are you know those, I mean? those cameras the same cameras that they do in the play-by-play -play, or is the, those are different cameras? So, no, they, there is three cameras on each court. One camera is the camera you're talking about, which is the overall mm -hmm. look, the bird's eye. And then there's two cameras that are in the corners, not in the corners based, but they're filming at the corners to be able to see your technique. Oh, okay. Okay. And then we have a third, a fourth camera, that's, but it's more with a, we have a system that goes with the iPads that you can actually, if you want to specifically film something at the net, for instance, or so on, that the angle of the camera that's placed is not getting, you can get that as well. That's wow. incredible. Yeah, pretty cool. I like it a lot. So the question that everybody asks, if you, they want to take a lesson with you, how much is it? With it, they, they call so, it father or paddle. <laughs> <laughs> so... We're still working on that. Uh, <laughs> he's waiting to see if he's got a lot of demand once it opens up. It no. might change, might change. Yes, because, I, listen, my, my goal is not to be on the court full time. Uh, uh, this is a first of many. I thought you hopefully. wanted to play all for your life, to play all, all the time. Exactly. Hey, playing, of playing. playing I, I love to play. I love to train. I love to, <coughs> I love to coach. But I love to coach. I, I I really want to compete. When I say compete, not necessarily me. I see myself as a as a as a as a coach for either high level players or want to become high level players. Uh, I would love to. Um, I'm going to create an academy. I would love to form even kids from from scratch that really are motivated. That want to be the first. That first, I want to call it. Even though we have a couple of good. U.S. players today, but the first real generation yeah. of U.S. players, and, and because that that uh, that's that's a must. There is yeah, no. It's important for there is for, no for the, for the game for the sport to grow. We got to have some U.S. champions, and yeah. that is really something I I would love to to do. That, that's a great point, and it's incredible that the United States doesn't have not even one. I mean, junior academy, paddle junior academy in the United States. I mean, I, yeah. I love I love what I'm hearing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that would be fantastic. Okay, so what other benefits do the members have, or is that is that pretty much it? So the the membership at Parallax is really for the people who want to belong. It's for the people who um, come and play a lot. It doesn't give you necess. It's not. It's not. It's not a money play. Uh, the people who take the the membership are the ones that want to play on the premium courts. They want to be uh, invited to the social events. We'll have some social events once uh, once or twice a quarter, specifically reserved to the to the members, we'll, they'll get some uh, merchandise. We'll have a, we have some specific merchandise for Miami Paddle in um, uh, Paddle X in Miami uh, that we are very actually proud of saying that it, we're recycling 100%. Everything is made out of 100% recycled plastic. Wow, that's, yes. that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're really, cool. really, it's really a cool thing. Even our furniture 
is made. Of, and it, you, you will have a tag on your merch that will tell you exactly how many bottles were used for that piece of, of, of merch. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That. yeah, we're going to have um, so a shirt, like a polo shirt is about 11, 11 bottles or, or a long sleeve shirt is 18. Wow. A uh, cap is seven. And, and even our benches are 1800. You know, wow, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. no, it's it's so. Do, it's, the, do the members get access to reserving courts sooner or not? Yes, okay, so, so that's, the other that's to me, I think that's going to be the biggest perk, yeah. yeah, because the members will get access to the reservation of the course two weeks in advance and they'll be able to book the course five times over those those two weeks a rolling, rolling reservation. So, for the people who really want to play at specific times, uh, on specific days. Uh, that's definitely something that they will be interested in. The non-members will only get two reservations in a period of three days. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yes. That, oh, yeah, that's so. a, that's a huge perk, man. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you, let's say I like to play at six o'clock in the afternoon. So I can do in the, those two prior weeks, I can reserve five, six o'clock slots before yes. anyone else. Yes. Oh, that's incredible. Yes. I, I really think the, the, the and we're going to limit the members as well. I mean, the number of members where we're because we don't want to. We don't want to close. We're not trying to close the club for members. You see, uh, that's not a model. Uh, some other clubs do that and they, that's a different model. Uh, but uh, uh, we're really trying to uh, be a mix of the people who actually want to belong and be um, playing at the best facilities. Um, uh, and the people who just come pay to play, you know, uh, which is a major, we want to try to build the base today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not as, as, and I'm saying this for the whole industry, we're in a phase where we need to build the base, yeah. uh, and it will be better for everyone. So I'm, I'm welcoming. I know that, um, some other clubs are opening a lot of courts and so yeah. on. I don't see that as a problem. I see that as a blessing, yeah. if anything yeah. today, because, uh, until we have, and until I, I, I'm going to sound crazy, but until we have like close to a thousand courts in Miami, because no. we can't fulfill we're the not, demand right we're now. Not, we're yeah. not competing. Okay, I got a question for you. All right, do me and Julian get com complimentary uh, uh, membership passes? <laughs> or, at least me, or at least me. Exactly. You're no, for sure. Here. We'll we'll definitely hook you up. Ah, yeah. nah, you heard that? <laughs> <laughs> Something interesting. Let's say I'm a member and I want to book. Let's say. Oh, well, you are. You are now. We're well, no. I want the 6 o'clock <laughs> slot every Thursday for the entire year. For the entire year. Would you, as a member, can I do that or not? No. Pay you up front and then... The reason I, I I'm, because I do that a lot of in the Northeast. And yeah, I know, but I don't know if that's good business. You know, I, that's, I, that's I, tough I, I just I would not accept that. The The reason is uh, I it's it's just we want to give to as many people as possible the possibility to play. Yeah. And if I say yes to one person that yeah. wants to do that, then I'm going to have to say yes to 20 others. That's a great see? point. And and so for us, uh, we don't. We don't think that's the way we don't want to play. We really want to build the base. We want to yeah. give access to the courts to as many people as possible. Yeah. Um, and that's why we have, uh, I think, a great, um, we have valley hours where the courts are going to go for 90 bucks. Yeah. Wow. So that's what will be Smart. in the middle of the day or, yes. you know. Smart. So, yeah. so uh, this way, uh, because not, not everybody can yeah. afford yeah. Yeah. 150 yeah. bucks yeah. or 135 yeah. bucks. That's true. Uh, so we really want to give access to the courts to as many people as possible to build the base. So l let us know a little bit what um, everybody needs a, ra a, a racket. So what brands are you going to have? I mean, what 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 can I get when I go to the club, when I walk through the doors? We're building this club under, um, it's a temporary event uh, for now. And so we have one phase. The phase one is with a, a, a hospitality tent. Okay, but you Does will it have food. And, yes, uh, we, you will not even see it. You will feel completely. We built it. We're building it out as you, you you were saying, as we speak, and you will not have the feel of that you're in a tent. Uh, you will have a, a an entrance with AD screens showing everybody where where they're playing. Nice. Um, you will have a large, very large, a uh, eighteen foot bar. Uh, with the reception on one side and the and the bar to to the clients on the other okay. side. What type of bar? You're talking about, uh, you know, beer and wine. Yes, oh, okay. it's gonna be it's gonna be Coffee. mostly drinks, 
and snacks. We're not, we don't have a, a, a kitchen. We don't have a restaurant, so to say. But you have so, other foods there, like other people, you know, third party companies offering food there or? Not for now, okay. not for now. It really, we want to focus right now on the paddle aspect. Okay. And so far, I haven't seen a great success throughout my 14 years of being in Miami with the FNB and paddle clubs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in 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 our phase of the of paddle X, which is the first one, we really want to get the paddle side right. Yeah. We want to, of course, offer to our customers the best drinks, the best sports drinks, energy drinks, uh, probiotic drinks, and and uh, and all these trendy drinks that come in. Yeah. And. Uh, and, and the best snacks, uh, energy bars, uh, some some small meals. You know, we're looking at doing some quiches, some uh, some some um, sandwiches, yeah. some Absolutely. sandwiches that that are. But nothing, unfortunately, we we can't by by code. We can't under the current situation. We cannot do anything more. Okay. So, so how about uh, bathrooms? Of course. Yes. How about showers? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's, great. That's, yes. That's awesome. Again. Under under this phase, we will have it will be temporary showers. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of um, um, for now. Mm -hmm. uh, we are building out the showers in a second phase. Uh, okay, so a bit what, later this year. So what's the second phase? Uh, you talk about first phase. So what's going to happen in the second phase? So what, what are the amenities there, and what Listen, are the changes? In the second phase, we we're st still studying. We're going to stay the way we are uh, as much as we can um, uh, for the next few months, and uh, we're still conceptualizing the next phase. But the next phase will be uh, locker rooms, uh, will be uh, uh, under AC uh, clubhouse. Uh, you know, we're studying every single, f yeah. we've, we've evolved with this. And uh, and we're gonna see also how this gels. Yeah, so you know? I'm assuming you're gonna listen to your customers and based on exactly. that, make some some changes. Very important question. I mean, such a having such a prime, prime location, Parking is there going to be parking? Ooh, you know, how's, how's that going to be? It's a good one. Yeah, we're very excited about that because we're going to offer uh, a full size parking with uh, over thirty spots. 30 wow! Spots. Yeah, inside the club, and then you wow. got few spots around also uh, where one thirty of, spots. That's good. Yeah, yeah, good. that's really good. Um, is it free? Yes, free for members or yeah. not? And no members or for, for now, it's free for everyone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the keyword for now. <laughs> yes. No, we want to, same thing. Listen, we want to see, Yeah. I mean, listen, there's so many aspects, there's so many ways you can do this. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you want to inflate the price for the, uh, for the, for the court uh, or blend it in or so on or so on. But for now, we you know we're, we're, we're coming in very humbly. Uh, we want to see, we want to listen to our customers. We want to see how they react. What we do know is that we, really put all the effort in getting the paddle experience to be the best yeah uh, we want to have the, what we believe the best courts um out there at, at this time uh, the best lights that's something for me i was really adamant about this because yeah. I, I i don't yeah. i don't see that well at night yeah so we're gonna we're putting 12 led lights on every court so what are you gonna do because you're right i mean uh when i play at night sometimes that that light is just not diffused enough um and if they lessen it you can't see so what is your tactic there on, on, on you know uh... so i'm not a light engineer myself but uh, we did hire the best ones okay. we, we believe and uh they uh, basically it is not to it's not the point the point is not to make the the strongest light the point is to uh diffuse the number of bulbs yeah, and yeah. if you look at the, the, our lights, are I I want to say six feet long, and they're showing they're they're shooting in many different directions. Right. Uh, we saw a study, and we believe uh, we've been told that it's it's the best possible. It's the same lights as center court at the Roland Garros. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Man. So, did you have to get that? from a different third party company or was that through my horse set or how, how did you? I mean, we all work together with okay. the same, you know, I'm very close friends to Hernan Auguste, who is the uh, CEO over there. And um, and uh, we, this was a passion project. We really wanted, I was really, I want to make this, uh, we put a lot of thought into it. 
uh, we didn't want to. It's it's always a balance also because you don't you know, just put the strongest lights and that's it. No, you want to orient the lights, and uh, and then there's a lot of tweaking and uh, and listening to mm -hmm. uh, all the experts of the industry and to to assemble the best courts. Okay, okay. Let's talk about coaches. Who do you have there for coaches? So uh, we the have number one coach. You of course no. No, <laughs> yeah. I, I, we have an amazing coach that we hired from Spain. Okay, his name is Simon Castello. And uh, then I have, we have some surprise. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I don't, don't want to tell you. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> This guy, bro. So, <laughs> so how, mu how much is I, it? I'll give it a secret. I don't want to, I don't want disclose yet. We Good. do have some surprises. Good. Uh, Good. Good. Because, you know, the competition is fierce. You got the poachers. <laughs> the poachers. So, 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 so now we, we, we haven't, we haven't, we've selected very, very specific coaches. Good. We are trying to build a very homogenous team and uh, and we try to cater or to address the needs of every single kind of client. Uh, we're trying to give roles to our coaches and uh, that's where um, uh, that's 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 the way we want to do it. So how much is a, a, a class, you know? Uh, well, it depends. It starts at uh, $150 okay. an hour um, and uh, depending on how many people are on the court, uh, it goes it goes higher for the lesson but of course you you cut if you're two people you divide by two if you're three you divide by three and and and, and so on so so let me ask you now let's say i want to go and play there what programs are you going to offer are you going to do clinics are you going to do i mean what other options besides that absolutely program? absolutely we're we're going to be having a full program of of events uh we want to be a very eventful um club um my partner juan pablo loves to Call it the Disneyland of paddle, basically. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love so it. So it, the idea is to cater to, you know, we want to have kids clubs for after school. Uh, we want to have right. clinics for women, for men, for competition, uh, Americanos. Um, we believe a lot into these Americanos, uh, very, very social. successful yeah. and social. You meet a lot of people. Uh, so the idea is really to and then we're going to be listening too. yeah you know I, I, just now a lot of people say oh i have this group of players and we want to help them in their community yeah. as well and i believe in that we have a club manager that is not on the court and uh that's what she's going to be doing good so so Let's say now you're gonna have all these programs. So I'm a customer. Where should I go to see what you guys have? You have a website, and if you can, if all this is coming. We we've 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 chosen to not disclose uh, too much or talk for months and years of coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. We've been trying to be as discreet as possible so far. And today, um, as we're getting closer, we're gonna start releasing information. Uh, yes, of course, we have a website. Uh, for now, it's just a landing page. Uh, we will um, open it very soon. Same thing with the social medias, the, the classic, uh, I want to say the classic streams of, of, of information. So Nali, tell us a little bit, uh, who are your, your product providers at the club, your sponsors and things like that? We're very happy and proud actually, that we, uh, me being French also, that we're actually only partnering with Lacoste for uh, the first real um adventure into paddle they haven't built a brand yet but uh they've uh, we've been able to um secure a partnership with them and we're producing and we're going to be dressing all our pros in lacoste that, that's so big that's how, did, how did that happen because they're not really no, into paddle right how did you not, make that happen I, if you listen it, that's it huge. came yeah it came out when we started working on the um on the brand and i was thinking and meeting with a lot of brands, uh, and uh, it, and it happened at the French Open when I played in 2022. And I'm talking to Wilson, and I'm talking to Head, and I'm talking to all the bull paddle. You know, I'd say the the original uh, or the typical brands, and I realized that none of them were really offering much, mm -hmm. except for me, of course, yeah, some free uh, gear for the pros and. Uh, uh, some deal on the balls and something like this, but imposing a lot of um, a lot of uh, exclusivities of selling their brand or 
or uh, a lot of constraints, I want to say. And uh, that's when I met actually with, and I was looking at the brands and look at who could be a really premium uh, brand I would love to dream about. And Lacoste came up pretty first. Uh, yeah, came up first. And uh, I was able to get my network going and got introduced to the CEO and uh, pitched him on the, on the idea at first. It was a long shot. And here we are, wow, you know? That's beautiful. Yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah. He loved the idea. He loved the concept. He loved the, the 360 offer. Um, he loved the positioning. And uh, to be honest, he wasn't even so acquainted. He thought he was like, oh yeah, well, paddle or pickle, we don't know which one we're gonna go for. And they said, guys, you gotta come to paddle. <laughs> Lacoste <laughs> is not a pickle brand, no, and no, so no. so and and that's how it is. And here we are. We have an amazing collection. We're branding uh, with Palalex also uh, the Lacoste collection. And for the, the the material, we we we're gonna be working with Nuestro Palo Nuestro. Um, the idea was we didn't want to specifically engage with one brand where we would impose to all our pros yeah, to play yeah. with a racket they're not necessarily familiar with. That's smart, yeah. Um, and that's, you know, for now, it's a great deal to be with Palo Nuestro. They're the biggest distributors out there. Um, so it allows us to be a little bit flexible. Of course, they will help our pros to, uh, to be uh, equipped for the rackets and the bags, but otherwise for all the rest is with Lacoste. That's wow. beautiful. Yeah, that's so really ba beautiful. Babolat is out of the way, being a French company. <laughs> Listen, Babolat, we will sell Babolat rackets. Okay, good. Yeah. So all this now, all our viewers and listeners, they're, they're getting excited. Is there an mm -hmm. opening day? To, uh, uh, is there is there some, I mean, is there a specific day? I mean, everybody's getting excited with all this. So we're going to be very careful with that okay. because you only have one chance at being at doing a you know, first impression yeah, yeah. And it's really important. Um, so we, we we're gonna soft open, open softly first, uh, friends and family before before even I mean once we get um, before we have everything set up, we don't want to receive the public in in a place that is not fully finished. And uh, then we're opening to the public, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Great and. Um, and we'll go from there. We're planning on having a grand opening a bit later in April um, that will kind of really, once we're Great ready to everybody, and right? everything is in place, then we'll be ready to for a for big announcement. So what data management are you guys going with? And what, you, what? data management, your software, and what app can are we're, you going to be using? Play, play by point. Play by point. Yeah. Okay, great. Everybody's familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's that's exactly the reason we chose to go with play by point because uh, they have a so far an overwhelming majority of the clubs uh, running. People are familiar with it. We are a totally new brand and company uh, and club, so it made sense to to go with play by point. Yeah. The, the great thing about play by point is that you can have all the clubs that you want in the main and you just mm -hmm. click in each one and then you can book and all yeah. that. I think it's fantastic. Okay. So let's talk about any new projects. I know you have other clubs opening up or possibly other clubs opening up. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, we, we, I can talk about what we, what's going on. Uh, we're happy to announce already that we have a second club that's going to come in Boca Raton Beautiful. indoor club. And uh, as you said, indoor, yes. Oh my gosh, it's amazing! Huge, yeah, yeah. That, there's yeah. nothing in Boca Raton, I, no. I believe. I don't Jets. think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. I love it. And then, uh, what's the time frame on that? It's gonna be this year. Oh, okay, yeah, right. it's gonna be definitely this year. Good. And then Palm Beach, Palm Beach. Right. No, so, you're saying east coast, or you're planning to move midwest or west coast? So or? far, so far, we're gonna focus on South Florida. We believe that it's uh where the market is a bit more mature yeah, and uh, we'll, we're going to stay here for now. But it's amazing that now that I'm sure you, you do as well, you heard of these different pop-up clubs all over the country and all that, uh, which is, it's a great sign. You know, we, we haven't seen that in the past couple of years. I mean, you hear projects in the West Coast, in the Midwest, in, in the Northeast. You hear a that. lot of projects. There's is a lot of flowing money going into yeah. this to this industry. It's pretty amazing, you know. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think 
uh, there's enough people for those clubs. I, I see that right now, but do you see at one point, you know, the demand not being there? And how do you keep the demand there? Are people still excited to continue? Like if me, I'm a fanatic. I'll play it forever. But not everybody's like like me. Um, listen, uh, I think that the game is here to stay. And I think yeah. that the, the markets are going to open one by one. It's not going to be one special yeah. specific actor opening all the markets. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of froth right now. Uh, yeah. you, like you said, we hear about so many projects, uh, but it's not that easy to get on, on your feet yeah. on the ground. Yeah, I really hope that a lot of, and I think a lot of companies are going to succeed, and uh, that's. But that's that's exactly. Um, the industry we want to build, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and I think going back to what you mentioned something before is that there's room for everybody here. And, and if you take the, let's say tennis, tennis, we, we, you know, the, you have the tennis background and all that. I mean, how many tennis clubs are, or courts are all over the United States and there's still room for growth. You know what I mean? You still new tennis clubs coming up and with paddle being such a new sport. And so it's becoming so popular that uh, the growth, it, it's, infinite for now i mean it, it, there's so many people only time will tell yeah. you know we we will see we're gonna see uh we're obviously very bullish um we think it's uh we're here to stay the game is here to stay yeah. we're all made some moves and uh and we hope uh, we hope everything uh and, and and even more is gonna happen yeah and and I I know that you play a few times at at, at Ocean Club and and when we took those courts out and we put we we took the tennis court out and we put three parallel courts and everybody was very skeptical but it's been very popular I mean everybody's loving it to play there right I know I, 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 I already we cannot play have a court <laughs> yeah exactly I mean that that's uh, and I think that's the the real growth is going to happen here in the United States when. You have these country clubs and, and they start taking courts away and putting paddle courts. And I think that's the, the big it's, push. It's trending right now. That's what people yeah. are doing for sure. Yeah. You know. All right, Nali, thanks for coming to Power Smash Academy. I want to wish you all the luck. And, and me and Julian will be at your yes. soft opening yes. with our membership. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See you there. <laughs>